I don't know what the fuck is going on with lighting in this video. Whatever. How's that? Yeah, it's alright. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, you guys asked for it, so this is going to be a video about the best and the worst books that I have read in the last decade. By which I mean since 2015, which is when I actually started tracking everything that I read in a year. So some of these books were atrociously bad, but I figured I'm gonna start off with the good stuff. So these are the best books that I have read since the last five years really, so only half a decade, but let's still count it. The first of these is one of the few that I don't have a physical copy here, which is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. I do own a physical copy, but I've lent it out to a friend. This is a lovely and very popular queer um, contemporary-ish story that's set in like the 1980s about these two boys, Aristotle and Dante, who live in, I think, New Mexico. It's been a while since I've read this one. This one I read in 2015, so yeah, my memory is a little hazy. But the main character, Ari, is a very, like, sweet, introspective boy whose older brother has been uh, sent to prison and his family never talks about him. They basically pretend that his brother doesn't exist. And he meets this kid named Dante, and um, it's like over the summer, and I think Dante goes to like a more fancy private school, but they end up, you know, forming this connection. Dante teaches Ari how to swim, and you know, romance things ensue. It is such a lovely book. I think it is really important. It pretty much has a happy ending, despite being set in, I think it's El Paso, actually. I think it's not New Mexico. Despite being set in the Southwest during the 80s. Yeah, it doesn't have a bad ending. That one has definitely stuck with me over the years. I really want to reread it once I get it back from my friend who has, I think, been borrowing that book since 2015 or maybe 2016. They've had it for a while. The next on my top books of the decade is a series, which is the Heroes of Olympus series by Rick Riordan. Not the Percy Jackson and Olympian series, because I liked that one. I didn't love it. I loved Heroes of Olympus. Um, it starts off way, way stronger than Percy Jackson does. Um, I would say that book one is still the weakest of the series, because Rick Riordan just does not do book ones very well. They're just not his strong suit. He does the follow-up books much better. But this one has a much more diverse uh, cast of characters. It has many more point of view characters than Percy Jackson, which is just told in first person from Percy's perspective. This has like a whole cast of point of view characters and it just is so, so good. Oh man, I don't know how much I should say about it because it is a sequel series. So I feel like sort of the entire series is a spoiler for Percy Jackson and the Olympians, but this one does bring in the Roman gods um, where Percy Jackson only deals with their Greek counterparts. This deals with the Roman side of things as well. And I love Romans. I love all the characters in this one. I love the new characters, but um, Percy and what is her name? Annabelle um, have some really good stuff in this book. And yeah, there's just a lot to love in this one. I still haven't really found any of Rick Riordan's follow-up series to be quite as satisfying as this one, so I think I'm going to just have to reread this series sometime soon, because I miss having really, really good Rick Riordan books in my life, and these are really the only ones that hit the spot in that particular way. Okay, so my next topic of the decade is going to be H's for Hawk by Helen McDonald. I did this one on audiobook, which is why I don't have it with me. Um, this is the only nonfiction on this list and it is a memoir that is also part history and part like naturalist history. It's very weird and cool and that's why it ended up on this list. So the author, Helen MacDonald, has a long-standing history of participation in and interest in falconry um, and when her father died very suddenly she ended up uh, deciding that she was going to train a goshawk, which is the like most notoriously difficult bird to train. And so it journeys her experience training this goshawk, but it also journeys um, like a biography of T.H. White because she's also reading 
the T.H. White book, The Goshawk, and about his experience raising a goshawk and how he did it really, really badly. But it, and it also just goes into like the history of falconry, which is really cool. And so this book is beautifully written. It's beautifully narrated by the author on audiobook, if you are interested in that. And as someone who is just really into Birds of Prey for most of middle school, this just had a lot of things that I was looking for. So the next three books that I have were all from 2017, which was apparently a very good year for me. The first of these is the Queen's Thief series by Megan Whalen Turner. I don't own all of them in physical copy yet because I borrowed them from friends and got them out of the library when I was reading them the first time, and I've slowly been collecting them, but because these books have been in print for like 20 something years, they've gone through 8 million different editions, and I only want to have ones on my shelf that are the same edition, so every time I find one that is the correct edition in like a used bookstore, I pick it up. So I currently have books one, three, and five of the five book series. I'm missing two and four. This is the one that was published in 2017. Um, I think this one was published in like 80 something. Okay, so it's copyright 1996 for this first one. And then this last fifth one was published in 2017. So in 20 years, she has published five books in this series. So who knows when the series will actually be finished. I think she said there's only supposed to be one or two more in that series, but again, who the fuck knows. Uh, I love this series. Each book is told with a different point of view character or characters. Um, each one has its own kind of complete arc, but it does have an overarching like world storyline that we're following. There's, n I sort of feel like there's not a ton that I can say about these books because there is such a good reveal in book one that is really like key in these next books. And if you don't know what it is and you like, find it out as you're reading it, like if it doesn't get spoiled for you, it's a really good reveal. So yeah, I don't know. But the main character of this one is a thief named Eugenides who has um, been thrown in jail in the king's prison for trying to steal from the king, um, and then basically gets uh, conscripted into this journey to go steal a jewel um, for the king. It's like an important historical artifact that would give him a lot of power. So it's part like road trip story, it's part like buddy cop drama, except not really, more like cops and robbers. And it's set in a world that is very like ancient Byzantine Greece. It's really cool. I love this world. It has one of the greatest couples in a series that I have read in a very long time. Um, the writing style of this series is also very sparse. It's almost a middle grade series, although it usually gets shelved in YA, but I find that that actually really works in this series and makes some of the scenes much more impactful because she doesn't go into like super flowery detail. It'll be like one sentence and it'll be killer. The narration is very sparse but super super effective and that's the thing that I really like in this series. Okay next for the 2017 best books of the decade is In Other Lands by Sarah Reese Brennan. Um, I just love this book. What is there to say about it? It's very popular. The main character Elliot is an extremely grouchy bisexual who gets like whisked away from our world to this like magical land. He's yeah he's 13 when he first gets whisked away and then I think the book ends when he's like 16 or 17 I want to say. So it basically chronicles his first you know four years in this magic school being trained as a diplomat um, and his best friend Serene who is the only elf at the camp um, who is one of the best warriors of the camp. There's also Luke Sunborn who is from a very like popular prominent family in this world, which is called the Borderlands. Um, and he is the like blonde hair, blue eyed hero of the story that Elliot, who is a small bullied 13 year old hates on principle. And they all form this, you know, trio of weirdos. And it's just, oh, it's so good. One of my favorite things about this story is that it plays with a lot of very popular and well-known fantasy tropes in a way that is very clever, but also very loving. So there's like playing on magical schools, playing on portal fantasies, playing on things like the chosen one narrative, all of that kind of stuff. I just love this book. Okay. And the next best book of the decade is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin, or well, the Shattered Earth, Broken Earth trilogy is really what it is. I only own the first one of these in print form because I was trying to read it in print form and it just wasn't 
working for me. Um, and so I ended up switching to audiobook and that worked way better and I finished the whole series in audiobook. So this book is told through um, three different narratives that are all happening at different times and it is in a world where there are these regular catastrophic extinction events um, and that's what the fifth season is, is it's known as the death season. There are also mages in this uh, book that all deal with like earth magic and earthquakes and pulling heat from the earth and redirecting it and they are very very powerful but they are very very discriminated against and most of them have basically been locked up in what is known as like the citadel which is like a main campus, I guess, in the middle of the main city of this world. So yes, this is a dark story. This is a very intense book because one of the storylines that's set like furthest out in the future is set during one of these mass extinction events and this one is so bad that it is going to end the world. I don't want to say a whole lot more about this series because it's finally getting the traction that I think it deserves on booktube. Um, I am glad that people are finally starting to talk about this one, but yeah, definitely check this one out. The hype is real, the ending is batshit insane, but it's totally worth checking out. The next one is the only one from 2018 that is making it into top of the decade. Um, and this is one that I've talked about multiple times because not only was it in my top five of 2018, it was also in my top five, I want to say in like 2014 or something like that. So I've talked about this series a lot. This is the Spirit Walker trilogy by Kate Elliott. This is a um, alternate fantasy version of our world uh, where magic exists and also there's like an extended ice age and also there was like a ghoul invasion in the kingdom of Mali I want to say it was in Africa and a bunch of African people ended up migrating north and essentially conquering Europe so there's like a whole reverse Thing going on. So pretty much everyone in this book is some kind of mixed race. There's like maybe a couple white people and most of them are pretty shitty. It's such a cool world. It's such cool magic. The main character Kat is a beautiful example of what it means to be a heroine and a Slytherin. And her and Antivai, her love interest, have such scorching chemistry um, because it's like a hate to love thing. There's like an arranged marriage thing and it's so fucking good. I've talked about this series a ton, so I don't want to go into it anymore, but the first book is called Magic. The trilogy is called the Spirit Walker Trilogy. It is by Kate Elliott. Please read it. Okay, so the last of the good books before we move into the bad books. Should I make this two separate videos? I don't know. We'll figure that out later. So the last book that I'm counting as best of the decade, which is from 2019, is Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I literally just talked about this book in my top five of 2019 video, so I'm not gonna say a ton about it, but it is so moving. I had been putting off reading it for years and then I finally did and I don't really cry at books, but there was a specific point. Does this count as a spoiler? Everyone knows the story of Achilles and Patroclus, right? At least vaguely. Basically, the point from Patroclus borrowing Achilles' armor onwards, let's put it that way. I was in the car because I always listen to audiobooks in the car and I had to basically, I got to school right around the time where Patroclus's ghost starts showing up um, and I had to just park my car and just sit in the parking lot while this was running because I could not go inside and be a functional human being. I was so emotionally devastated. I don't really cry at books, but I got very, very close with this one. It's so fucking good. Like the relationship between Patroclus and Achilles just evolves so naturally and they're both like such compatible weirdos and it also just feels so much like what it would be like to love a god or to love a demigod. It's so good. It's so good. Ugh. I'm probably gonna read Circe by Madeline Miller. That's her new one. Um, but I don't know that it's gonna live up to this one because there's something about this book that is just so good. And how many times have I said the words so good? I'm feeling very repetitive. So because I feel like I am starting to repeat myself, um, I might just move on to the worst books of the decade, which really I think is what you're all here for anyway. So I'm gonna, first of all, just mention that I am drinking a mug of tea, which my plant witch friend um, brewed up for me, and they call it their chill the fuck out tea um, because it has a variety of calming herbs in it. And yeah, I just feel like 
Given the general caliber of the books that we are about to talk about, I might need this. So I'm going to be going from best of the worst books to the worst of the worst books, not in order of when I read them. So the best worst book that I read over this decade was The Refugees by Viet Thai Nguyen. I had two problems with this book. One, it's a collection of short stories and I never love collections of short stories. There's usually a few that I like and a few that I really don't. But the second reason, which is the most important reason, is that the author reads his own book and it is a prime example of why you should never fucking read your own books unless you are a professional reader. Oh, it was bad. It was super stilted. It was very difficult to understand what he was saying at certain points. His like prosody of like, you know, his patterns of when of rising and falling were super all over the place. It was bad and it kind of ruined the experience of the book for me. So maybe it would be better in physical or ebook form, but it was bad in audiobook form. Um, my next least favorite book, both of these I actually read this year, is The Favorite, the chronicling of Sarah, Duchess of Marlborough. I forget the author. I'm not looking it up. This one I read in the wake of having watched the movie The Favorite, which was delightful. The movie is amazing. I then read the book hoping to get lots of gay drama. What I got instead was a lot of political maneuvering. It was just Honestly, it was really boring. This was the second nonfiction that I read in 2019 and it killed my desire to read more nonfiction. Uh, so I only read two nonfictions in 2019, even though I'd made a goal of reading more than that. I don't think I put a number on it, but anyway, yeah, this was bad. It was not what I was looking for. You know, if I had been super into the political maneuvering talk, I maybe would have liked it more, but it just, it was not what I was there for. So the next worst book that I read over the decade was Fallen Kingdoms. Um, Morgan Rhodes, I think, is the author. This one is bad because it is so, so formulaic. Like, it was so full of fantasy tropes that I ended up filling out a trope bingo card with it, um, where I just, as I was reading, every time I found an overused trope, I would just mark it down in the notebook and I filled out a bingo card with all shit from this book. It is bad. In fact, I wonder, yeah, I wonder if I can find that fantasy trope bingo card. Let me find out. Okay, so I couldn't find the notebook that I made the original fantasy trope bingo card in, but I did find a picture of it. So besides putting the picture up here, here are a couple choice ones. Um, I have a secret that could ruin me. It's magic. I have a secret that could ruin me. It's sex. Stoic hot bodyguard. Childhood friend who is male with an unrequited crush on the main character who is female. Power unlocks at age 16. Mystical guardians with hawk avatars. Prophecy slash chosen ones. Sassy princess who's not like other royals. Evil sexy witch. And to top it all off, traditional gender roles. So, I mean, beyond just being full of tropes and overall not very inspired, its characterization was super flat and uninteresting. It's it's not a good book. Next up on my worst books of the decade is Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Maas. I just don't like Sarah J. Maas's writing. I think it's boring. It feels really bloated. Like there's a ton of words for not a lot of action. I forced myself through this one. I don't remember why, if it was for a challenge or if I just felt like I needed to read a Sarah J. Maas book because she's so fucking popular on this, on booktube. Um, but yeah, I hated it. I tried reading her Throne of Glass series, and the reason that that's not on the worst books of the decade is because I failed out about less than halfway through of Throne of Glass. Um, the main character, after getting released from prison in the salt mines, spent way too much time talking about how she was annoyed that she wasn't pretty anymore, and I was just like, no. No, thank you. Also, her eyes kept changing color. Yeah, no, just wasn't for me. Just not for me. I don't like these books. I don't like her writing style. The next two are kind of tied um, in terms of how bad I consider them to be. So the first of these is the 100 trilogy. Um, this was obviously the inspiration for the TV show. It is the very, very rare situation where the TV show is better than the book. This I watched the TV show first and then was interested and read the books, and the books are bad. The characterization is super flat and one-dimensional um, for characters that in the show were really multifaceted. To be clear, I watched uh, two seasons of The 100, I think, and I started season three, 
and literally only watched the first episode and was just like, mm, yeah, I'm not gonna like where this is going and just stopped. And that was the correct decision for me. So when I say that the show is better than the book, I mean that the first two seasons are better than the book. But also like the show covers a whole lot more than the books do. Like the first season of the show is like the entire trilogy basically. And there's like this added, I say added, they're in the original books, they're not in the show. And there's this couple that are on the station and then they end up on the planet, but they're separate from the rest of the group. And one guy is like dying of infection and the girl has to like save him. And I literally could not care if he lived or died. Like, no. It was honestly boring. It had super flat one dimensional characters. I did not care about any of the romantic relationships. And yeah, it's not good. It's not good. The next one is a trilogy that I read in order to finish a challenge for one of those year long reading challenges. Like I think this one was Pop Sugar. Um, and this is partly why I've stopped doing year long reading challenges is because they lead me to read books that I really don't fucking like. Um, so this was the Mara Dyer trilogy. I don't remember the order of the titles. It's like the unbecoming of Mara Dyer, the something something, fuck it, who cares? Oh, what to say about this series? It started off with an interesting premise, um, which is partly why I kept going with the series, because I thought that what they were doing had some promise to it. And maybe it was just the first book was rough and the rest of the books will get better. No, no, they got so much worse. This one has a main girl, Mara Dyer, who I think, God, I read this book in when? Okay, I read this book in 2015, so my memory is hazy, but I think what happened was that she was in a building that was like, old and abandoned and they were doing like some Ouija board dumb teenage shit and the building collapsed and Mara Dyer was the only survivor and she might have some like supernatural power and there's a whole lot of gaslighting and people basically trying to convince her that she has a mental illness rather than having a supernatural power and all of that stuff was like had a very horror vibe to it I was into all that stuff um, the problem was everything else, particularly the problem was the shoehorned love interest that I did not care about. They had no chemistry. Um, and then in the third book, which fell apart for multiple reasons, both plot and character related, um, but at the end, they tried to convince me that the most important part of the story had been Mara Dyer's relationship with Noah. They were like, this is our love story. I'm like, no, this is your like gaslighting PTSD story that has to do with supernatural things. And God, I think they saved the world at some point. I don't remember. There was stuff that was way more important than your non-relationship that wasn't even very good. Oh God. So yeah, this is one where I still see it on shelves, like uh, in bookstores and whatever. And I just have to like cringe and walk past. I can't deal with this series. It's ugh. all right. The next one is one that I did an entire review on. This is Artemis by uh, Andy Weir. There we go. Yeah, I hated this book. I gave it two stars because I think it could make a good movie adaptation. Um, similar to the way that they made a better movie, The Martian, out of his book. The main character is hideously unlikable in a way that reads very much like a man who knows nothing about women trying to write a strong female character. She's supposed to be this like genius electrical engineer or something, something with tech, I forget. But she's fucking dumb every time the plot needs her to be. Um, and she's also just super combative for no fucking good reason. She has no desire to make anything of herself for no fucking good reason. She talks about how like teenage Jazz got her in all this trouble, her name is Jazz, but she hasn't fucking learned anything since then. She's making the same dumb fuck mistakes. Also, there's like a shoehorned character that like is, <sighs> He's supposed to be the like nerdy awkward boy who has a very obvious crush on Jazz, um, but it reads like fucking sexual harassment. And then they fucking hook up at the end. Like, ugh, it's so gross. It's such a gross male fantasy of a book. Um, I do think they could make a good movie adaptation out of it because it's a fucking heist on the moon. Like you can make a great movie out of that, but this fucking book is a fucking travesty. Sorry I'm saying fuck so much. Ugh. Okay, we've got two more. This next one is one that I hated a lot. It was gross. 
It was disturbing, not in a good way. Like, it was just shocking for shock value. It was the first volume of Preacher. Again, I don't remember the author. I'm not looking it up. Um, and this was another one where I watched the show, and I really enjoyed the show. And because I was... I think maybe I just started watching the show when I picked this one up. Again, it was for some challenge, like a readathon challenge or a pop sugar reading challenge. I don't remember. It was some kind of challenge thing. I hated it. It is so gross. It is just, it's trying to be edgy in like the 2000s version of edgy where there's like gross inbreeding and ugh. it's basically just like, some white dude's attempt to be like bashing Christianity, but the way to, that he's doing it is by like having these weird redneck characters who are like super abusive and inbred and horrible and the whole thing is gross. There's like bestiality in it for no fucking good reason. It's, yeah, it's disgusting. It's super misogynistic. It's super homophobic. And I returned it to get my money back because I wasn't fucking paying for that. And the final book that is considered, that I'm considering the worst book of the decade, I'm putting this one last, not necessarily because it is the worst of the bunch. I think Preacher is objectively the worst of the bunch, but because so many people love it and I hated it so much. This is all the light we cannot see. Again, I don't remember the author. Why did I hate this book so much? Uh, one, I think World War II stories are fucking played out as hell. Um, but then, you know, I read a book like Codename Verity, which is set in World War II, and I fucking love it. So that's not just it. It's that it's boring. It's that, like, the entire storyline with the kid who was, like, the radio engineer who gets conscripted, conscripted into Hitler Youth is just, like, misery for no good reason. And the thing is, is that it was misery that we've seen before. Like, I don't think this book did anything new besides having a blind main character, but nothing that it said about World War II, nothing that it said about Nazis, nothing that it said about cursed jewels and treasure hunters, which is a storyline that I somehow always forget about because they somehow made Nazi treasure hunters boring. I don't fucking know how. I don't, it didn't say anything new about any of those things. It tried to have this like trite, we're all connected ending, but I thought that the ending was total bullshit. There's sort of three main storylines. One is the like blind girl who gets sent to a like town on the coast to live with her uncle. Um, her father was like a museum curator person and they're like fleeing with artifacts from the Paris Museum. And then there's a story of the kid who gets conscripted into Hitler's youth because he's like a radio engineer. And then there's like the Nazi officer who's searching for this like cursed jewel thing. It felt like it was trying to be meaningful. I read this book because it won a Pulitzer Prize and that was a pop sugar reading challenge that year. I've effectively blocked most of this book out of my memory. It just felt like it was trying really hard to be meaningful and I didn't think it said anything that we didn't already know. And that kind of pretension, I just can't fucking stand. Yeah, this book is pretentious and I didn't like it. I didn't think that it had earned it. Um, I didn't think that it was as smart as it thought it was. And I didn't think it deserved the Pulitzer. I don't really read Pulitzer Prize winning books because honestly, I think most of them are this kind of pretentious bullshit. And I still see it. Oh my God. I still see it on like recommended shelves in bookstores. And it's so bad. What do people like about this book? And honestly, this is why I get so had up about this book is because I keep fucking seeing it and people touting it as like beautiful, moving. I'm like, no, no. Whereas like Preacher is just objectively gross. All the light we cannot see. I don't know what I'm missing. I hate this book. And everyone else is just like so into this book and I do not like it. <sighs> oh boy. I feel like I need to stop and chill the fuck out. Um, so that is all for my worst books of the decade. There were a few others that were like kind of borderline that were more disappointments, like they just weren't what I was expecting out of them. But anyway, if you want me to talk more about those, you know, find me on Instagram or Twitter or whatever and we can talk about it. I'm thinking my next video after this will be 2019 statistics because I do track uh, my reading on a Google spreadsheet. I have my own categories of what I track um, and so I can talk about that kind of stuff. So let me know if you guys want to see that. In the meantime, tell me what you are reading down in the comments and I will see you guys soon with another video. Thanks for watching guys. Bye. Son of a bitch. Okay. I don't know if this was worth the wait, but I hope so. <laughs>